divine truth frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session two. Who or what are demons? Well, demons are people who have lived on earth, who have, through their choices and desires of the things that they chose to do on earth, have done very many damaging and evil things while on earth through their choices. And then when they've passed into the spirit world, they have continued to do their damage, uh, continue on their damaging way. So they are continuing evil doing. They continue to be malicious. They continue to be extremely damaging to both themselves and to other people. And as a result, uh, there are some, you know, scriptures in the Bible, for example, and some religions that classify them as demons. They are not fallen angels. In fact, there is no Satan, the devil, who is a fallen angel, and there is no demon that is a fallen angel. And in fact, once you become an angel, it's impossible to fall, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I say impossible because your will is always in harmony with the love that exists within your soul. And as a result of that, the love drives every action. And so it's impossible to become a demon after you've been an angel. And so the, uh, God never created any unique uh, beings that have free will other than the human being. The human being is God's highest creation in terms of the, the creation that was given free will. And God doesn't have a higher creation that I've observed in the spirit world. And as I said, I've been there for 2,000 years. And while at some point in the future I might discover such a creation, um, so I'm not ruling that out, mm -hmm. there is certainly none that exist in our universal area, particularly around uh, that surrounds this earth, earth or that surrounds the spheres that, uh, and dimensions that surround this earth. Um, they are only people who have lived on earth who have chosen to do very wicked and evil things because of their unwillingness to live in harmony with love. And as a result, their condition has worsened and they look demonic, they look terrible with their body. They actually often portray themselves to look such a way to frighten or scare others. But the reality is when you're a spirit in the spirit world, you can visit them and talk to them even. But uh, obviously, you, you, there's usually not much success mm -hmm. in, in trying to convince them to move away from their current course of action. Yeah, so just to be really clear, a demon is really, you're saying, a person who's lived on earth? Correct. And who's made choices that have affected, that are unloving or that are evil? Yes, yeah, so, so if we're really clear, mm -hmm. a demon or a devil in the spirit world is just a person who used to live on earth, who has now passed over into the spirit world. And because of the unloving choices they made with their free will on earth and their unloving choices that they continue to make while they're in the spirit world, they have degraded their condition so far as to only be or to become mostly malicious and evil. And as a result of that, take very malicious actions and terrible, uh, terrible actions. In fact, actions that guide many people here on this planet are taken by these demons or spirits. Mm -hmm. And they have the ability to change and get out of their condition, but uh, they do not take the option to do that either. So they have used their free will in a direction that's out of harmony with love they continue to attempt to break all of God's laws. And of course, any person who continues to attempt to break all of God's laws finds that there's a lot of pain and suffering as a result. And these particular spirits are enraged about the pain and suffering that they are personally feeling as a result of their personal choices. Mm -hmm. So they've lived on earth, they've made unloving choices. While on earth and the spirit world. And in the spirit world after they pass. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned briefly that they could make a different choice. They can. So, and so in that case, would then they cease being a demon? Yes, of course. So uh, the, you could say a demon is not a person or a being that, that is created that way mm -hmm. or self-created that way. They are a person living in a certain level of, you know, very, very strong negative emotion that uh, they could get out of if they chose a different course of action. And, uh, and in fact, there are many angels, many other spirits, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about in a minute in another question. There are many other spirits who are trying to assist them to get out of their condition. 
And God, through God's laws, is always trying to assist these spirits to get out of their condition, or their demonic condition. Mm -hmm. However, many of them are very resistive to listening to any yeah. logic and listening to anything regarding love. Have spirits gone from the condition of being demonic or a demon to a higher condition? Yes, there's been many spirits who have gone from being a demon to being an angel, in mm -hmm. fact. Mm -hmm. um, the, many, uh, some of the people that people may know uh, in terms of history, people like King Herod, who was responsible for my death or partially responsible for my death, he arrived in the spirit world in a very demonic state and progressed into even a darker state after a short period of time because of the actions he took. But he is now a celestial angel. Mm. He, he got out of that condition, mostly because of the help that his soulmate gave him through that, through that process. And he is now a celestial angel. Another person is uh, the first, um, the first, um, what's it called? Emperor, Emperor of Rome. Yeah. Yeah, Caesar, <laughs> the first Caesar. Julius, I think his name is Julius Caesar. Yep. Um, he, he, the first Caesar, he, he arrived in the spirit world in a very, very dark condition. He, he progressed to an even darker condition. Mm -hmm. He was almost worshipped by the other demons who were there because of how dark his condition was. Um, and then he also made progress and eventually he made progress through the help of a person on earth mm -hmm. who actually talked to him and eventually convinced him that he could progress out of his condition into a better condition. And that was almost 2,000 years after he passed, mm. that that occurred, 1,900 years after he passed. So there are examples in the spirit world of many demons who have become angels. Lovely. Yeah. One final uh, query about demons. Mm -hmm. Often we see a demon depicted as not really human with um, extreme features and very ferocious or mm -hmm. scary looking. Mm -hmm. Is this really how a spirit who would be called a demon looks? Frequently, yes. Uh -huh. um, that's how they often look. They, they're, as I said, they're physical body has degraded into the same condition that their emotions dictate. So the more enraged the, the spirit becomes, the more their physical body and the physical appearance mirrors their condition. Mm -hmm. And also they have a, a desire generally to frighten other people. And of course, so they, have a de they then of course have a desire to m force other people to become afraid by manipulating their own form mm -hmm. to, so that other people become frightened of their form. The reality is they don't have a huge amount of power in the spirit world. In fact, the reality is that one angel can literally control, if he desired to, he wouldn't desire to, but if he desired to, he could control millions of demons at the same time. Mm -hmm. So th they have very little power. And in fact, most of their power is gathered by grouping together and influencing people, influence, so groups of 20, 30, 100,000, there's even some groups of 10,000 or 100,000 of them in the spirit world, where they group together and then they focus all of their attention on one person. And that's the only way that they really can get power, through collective power. Um, they focus all of their energy and their emotions through one person. And as long as that person on earth has similar types of emotions that they do, or is afraid of them, mm -hmm. which obviously many people on earth are, and then these particular spirits can manipulate them into doing all sorts of things, including killing themselves, killing other people, harming other people. Um, so they have a lot of dark emotions, and these dark emotions actually have, a, have this physical result in the spirit body of modifying the physical form of the spirit body to look very evil, mm -hmm. which is the intent of the spirit themselves. They want to look evil because they want people to be scared of them. And in fact, that is their primary emotion. Their primary emotion is to try to make other people frightened. They get a lot of joy, if you could call it joy, mm. from making people be frightened of them. Mm. And that's their main reason for, for modifying their appearance in such a way. And it's interesting, isn't it, because you said uh, because many people are frightened of dark spirits and demons mm. and yet you mentioned that the only one of the primary ways they get power is just by by our fear by our fear of them yes if we have no fear of them it's very very hard for them to manipulate us in any way the only other way they can manipulate us is through our addictions and we can talk about that in another mm -hmm. question as well but 
they, they can only manipulate us through our addictions and as a result, if we have addictions, then of course our, our addictions can be manipulated by these particular spirits. But other than that, they have very little energy. Mm -hmm. They have very little ability to control us. They have no physical strength hardly whatsoever compared to a person on earth. Um, and in fact, it requires many thousands of them and often tens of thousands or even millions of them to gather together in order to manipulate matter on earth. And they all have to cooperate in order to do that. And of course, because they're so angry, they don't find cooperation very easy. <laughs> they can't cooperate with each other very easy. They have to have a very strong focus on having one enemy before they cooperate together. And so um, there are many, many millions of these kind of people who have passed from the earth, who have been quite evil in their choices while they're on earth. But as we've pointed out, they can all become angels if they chose to take some different kind of action. Uh -huh. Mm. It's a wonderful universe God has made, isn't it, in a way? <laughs> it is. <laughs> we, we get to feel the penalties and consequences of our negative actions, but on top of that, we have the potential of becoming an angel just by changing our decisions. Mm. And the, the, the capacity for someone who's made so many unloving choices to then make a different choice, mm. to become more loving and to actually have themselves and their life change completely. Mm. It's one of the most beautiful provisions I feel like God has made for us. Yeah. I feel too that uh, people on earth have a very limited view of God. We don't realise how clever God is. And, and people on earth have this limited view. They think that God would have made a being that can fall or, or degrade their condition without ever being redeemed. Mm. And the reality is God's universe doesn't even allow for all of the laws in God's universe don't even allow for such a being to exist continuously forever. Yeah. And God's laws are constantly at work, correcting the behaviour of these particular individuals. And that's why many of them have become angels over periods of thousands of years mm -hmm. that it's taken many of them to change. And because God's laws are always at work, always bringing the person, bringing the person, drawing the person towards love. And uh, God's made a very, very clever universe one that far exceeds the imaginings of any scientist on the earth or any other theologian or any other person on earth. And whenever we think of God as a limited being, we need to start thinking again because God <laughs> yeah. has, has such a creative and uh, powerful system that helps us all grow in such positive directions that it's impossible to be negative and malicious and evil for the rest of your existence. Mm. Mm. And in fact, God has designed the universe that we have less and less power the more evil choices we make. Exactly. I think that's very misunderstood on the planet. A lot of us feel that um, evil has power, not recognising that actually we are using our will to give it power. And Exactly. It's fear that gives evil its power. Mm. That's if the only thing. If, if everyone was not afraid of evil then evil would no longer have any power whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's actually the fear of evil that gives evil its power. And this is one of the most damaging effects of fear on this planet. Fear perpetrates evil. So this is why it's so essential that any person who is in fear mm -hmm. deals with their fear because fear itself perpetrates evil behaviour in others and also potentially in ourselves. Well, we allow, if we, we, we allow make excuses for our own evil if we feel our fear, if we're afraid and we don't want to confront our fear, don't we? Yes. Yeah. But not only that, we, we support the actions of evil people. Yes. We, we pander to their actions. It's very, very damaging what happens. And whereas that doesn't happen so much in the spirit world because the evil people are separated from the good people. Mm -hmm. The people who have been loving... Ha, uh, live in a different location and so therefore are not as afraid of the evil itself. Uh, whereas here on earth, because we're all living together, we become afraid of the evil. And uh, the problem with becoming afraid of evil is we give it power. Yeah. And in giving it power, we are supporting it. We are supporting the generation and perpetration of evil on the planet. If we chose differently, if we chose to address our fears and release ourselves from our fears, evil could not exist on this planet. And that's one of the uh, main things that we need to bear in mind mm -hmm. when we come to talk about spirits like, that are devils or demons yeah. because they, they only gain power through our fear of evil. Yes, and they are more challenged to confront their own evil 
when we stop give, pandering and giving them yes. power. Because and they become powerless. Yes. See, the only way in which they get any satisfaction is by feeling powerful mm -hmm. over others. And when you no longer respond to their power, they feel powerless. And that's the emotion they need to address before they'll progress in the spirit world. They need to feel that powerlessness, surrender to it, have some good cries about it <laughs> that yeah. they're now power powerless and have been powerless for the majority of their life. And once they make those particular changes, then they generally change in other directions as well. It's powerful, isn't it? When we live in fear, we give evil power. Mm -hmm. But when we challenge fear and release our fear, we actually, it's not just the the ceasing of our support of evil, it's actually working in a positive direction Correct. immediately. Yeah. We immediately start to create environments and situations that support growth and support love and support truth. Correct. Great system that yeah. God designed. But on the earth it's going to require large numbers of people yeah. to, to not oppose evil because you, you don't need to oppose it. You just need to not do what it dictates. Mm. That's all you need to do. And if there's large, en amount, uh, large enough amounts of people doing that, it's impossible for evil to continue to survive. Mm -hmm. And in fact, once the majority of people on the planet are doing that, we can actually constrain the evil as well. We can actually place the evil under constraint using the same methods that are me used in the spirit world and actually restrain the people who are given to evil tendencies until they work through their particular emotions. And one of the things we would try to do is help them feel some of their powerlessness, yes. which means we need to create an environment for them that actually uh, helps them address the powerlessness from a psychological and emotional perspective. Mm. So that's what God's doing in the spirit world and that's what we need to do here. So getting back to the question though, if we examine the causes of evil, we can see that fear supports evil. So demons and devils can only be supported through their action by being afraid of them. Mm -hmm. And we need to address our fear. Mm. 